it's if it helps companies to be successful outside of Estonia, that's a great thing to do, even if, if it has a huge buzz aura around it. Another thing which what it's doing is it's actually changing the mindset. So I would say I don't know, ten five to ten years ago, um, less people thought about or they imagined that I want to be a entrepreneur or I want to do and um, start the, the mindset grows. If you want to be successful, then you get to a, 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 I don't know, to bank or a, a decent uh, decent uh, company. You grow there and then you'll be you'll be wealthy. But those are kind of different stages there. But what, what was in the banks ten years ago is they were agile, so you actually had opportunity. Twenty years ago in Estonia, 21, 22 year old guys were running banks, which is something that that will that will never happen in in, uh, in a Western society. So we have gone to that that phase where, where when you're young, you actually can't run the bank anymore. So you need to find other other ways and other challenges. So today, younger people have have an opportunity whether to join kind of a really cool global uh, global team uh, like yeah, Marine Explorer to to get on the board and do something on a global scale or start something on your own, whether it's a domestic or global. So the mindset uh, has changed a lot. Uh, maybe uh, at this point, uh, there always has to be some skeptic in the panel who doesn't believe in things. So I would say that the bubble is a, a bit too big. Everybody wants to build apps that change the world. Uh, so it would be good if we would kind of, yeah, switch, the, switch the focus to some more kind of materials things. But I think it's kind of just a phase that will pass. Well, I think this panel is a good example. The whole companies that we represent are business to business companies. Uh, even at the end user is a considerable. We serve businesses. And, uh, and just another comment that Martin made, I think I like that, is, is even when people worked at a government uh, or, or a big bank, they had to be entrepreneurial. They didn't know it at that time. So 21 year old guys running the bank, they had a lot of pressure going. They had to be entrepreneurial, so they had they were entrepreneurs in the big corporation, and that's how I started. Also, I said, you know, never mind, I'm gonna leave and start my own thing. So that that is the clip that I see. So people are still entrepreneurial, but just choose new, faster, cheaper ways how to do stuff. Let me let me focus on the on the, on the bubble comment for, for a moment. Uh, we know from from history here in Silicon Valley that 50 percent of the companies that are backed by the crowd on Sam Hill Road, Steve Jarvis and his competitors, 50% of those companies that take money from organized venture capital fail to return money to their investors. They, 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 not, they, just, they just go out of business. If you go, go a step below that to the companies that, that are raising money uh, from friends, fools, and family uh, and, and angels, the, the number goes up to 75%. Just basically, it doesn't work. The, the company collapses, and uh, the consequences of quote failure. Uh, I'm guessing, and I think it would be the case that if all uh, Sony has had the benefit of a huge, huge wave of, of adulation, I don't know they use that intentionally. Adulation as a result of Skype and the consequences of what, what Skype has done, which led to all kinds of, of interesting opportunities, all of which you guys are pursuing. There, there are undoubtedly companies that have started and gotten money that, that haven't made it past the gate, any kind of gate. So is it is it a bubble in the, in the sense that we, in Estonia, know the, the appreciation for the risk it hasn't really hit yet, right? Yeah, I think there is definitely a Fear of failure factor. Well, is it is it is it is it really a fear of failure that uh, we all have here in the valley, or is it uh, is it a, a higher level, or is it just we have a, we're such a young entrepreneurial community that the true perception of the risk of failure hasn't set in? There are any number of possibilities. What's your perception? Yeah, it's a good good question. I'm not sure. I to be honest, I think uh, I ask puzzling questions. <laughs> I think this bubble, I would say, I would call actually the show, the form or the shape, I think it fits Estonia. I don't have to only feel the same. I think we will 
have to fill the bin with the failures, and also in the next success stories. But I think the shape is very good. And it's uh, rather than to talk about whether the shape is to be or not, everybody should make a force to fill it. I mean, I, I would add to this, uh, uh, it's a timing question. So the barrier to entry a creator company is, you know, it's, yeah, it's 18 like one minutes, credit 18, minutes. 18 minutes, well, in Estonia, yeah, but I mean, the price of building actually a business, especially a, a service-oriented business for a mobile app or something like that, it's, it's really low. And at the same time, we have this high energy of Estonians who have now burst out and tried to build all these businesses. To, Put these two things together, and that's why I get this East Estonia and people trying to build things. And there will be failures, uh, and there will be success stories. It's just you know we don't we don't know what's the rate, but I, I wouldn't say that it's so much different from I've been living here for one and a half years now. I would I would say it's different here than it is in Estonia. It's just the energy level that is a bit different, and people can normally tackle a bit harder problems due to the mathematical backgrounds that people normally tend to have, programming and mathematical the curriculums that we have. That's, that's the factual well, let, me, let me do a little follow-on on this, this subject. Um, and the world went through a, a huge recession, and certainly in Estonia, downturn in the economy. Uh, Estonia famously uh, sucked it up and took their, took their medicine. We're, United States in its inevitable way has continued to kick the can down the road. Uh, you know, the GDP fell dramatically, the wages of uh, the public employees were, were cut. All kinds of interesting things happened, uh, leading to a big controversy with Paul Grubin, uh, between the President and Paul Grubin. How did any of that, that general recession in the economy, you know, affect the, the entrepreneurial sector? Did it, did it, did it create new demand for entrepreneurs as it, as it has here in the Valley? That is to say, people say when they get laid off like you look at Francisco, well, I guess it's time to do that thing that I've always thought about doing and just plunge in and do it, or was it the reverse? Or something in between? Yeah, I, I think it was something in the between or something both uh, at the same time. Of course, it, it kind of, I mean, uh, at the times like that, you know, harder to get the job, then people kind of start thinking, okay, I need to put food on the table. So you don't take the risky road. Uh, that, that's kind of one part. I mean, you're more cautious in a situation like that. The other side is, of course, I mean, um, what government also did, uh, they were trying to kind of uh, train all those unemployed people so they have different courses, so to kind of get the courses to uh, get into entrepreneurial space to understand what to do, how to do. So what happened, uh, even you know, on a smaller scale, so maybe some, some smaller coffee shops were made, some, uh, some smaller barber shops were made, but, but people learned and, and, and definitely some brighter, brighter guys also kind of saw, that, saw an opportunity. So they just needed a push. They weren't in the conference zone. They were doing great in a, in a big company. Everything was secure, life was nice. Uh, they had uh, the dog, uh, a retriever, uh, so it's, it's kind of the picture of the fabulous Estonian life, but they needed a push, so they were, they were pushed out of the comfort zone, and they started, they needed to do something, so they needed to figure out how to put the food on the table, what to do, so they started a new business. Mike, your, your, your company actually uh, goes back to that Europe, even before it was done. Yeah, that's where we started in, uh, in 2007. So how is your company and its growth and uh, economic activity and hiring and so forth and opportunity, was it, how was it impacted by, by these external events that don't really relate to this? Well, I think it was, it was beneficial in the sense that we were able to hire you know, some really great talent without, uh, you know, there was more, there was less competition. Uh, for jobs, so we really get yeah, some really talented people out there. Okay. You, you four uh, represent a, a diversity of, of companies uh, doing a, a wide you know, a set of very interesting things in Estonia. We have an audience here who uh, are, are interested in being able to follow what's going on. Being able to follow in the sense that they're potential business partners, 
their potential investors, their potential collaborators, their potential employees, uh, their potential people who can help uh, the companies grow and flourish in a number of ways. If, if, and I'm going to ask each of you to answer this question in turn. What is it that, that, that would be the best way of, of the group here at Silicon Valley to follow the kind of economic activity that's going on in Estonia? To, other than, other than going to the conference that, that uh, Andres and I hold, hold every year in July, at, uh, this year at Tallinn Tech. Uh, other than that, uh, what, what can people do to become more aware of, of the really exciting things that are going on that are represented by your four companies and many others that are here today? Right? Well, I get this, uh, it's called the Press Digest. It's an English translation of everything that's going on in uh, Sony newspapers in, in one. It's not, there's not a lot going on in the newspapers, but what is going on is covered in a couple of pages of English. That's a great insight to the, the latest news. Uh, I think the last panel, Tali, mentioned this very well, that Estonians in general are very bad at marketing. And uh, we can talk all we want about this E-Estonia and being uh, very uh, go, you know, can-do attitude kind of people, but not really a lot of people know about it yet still. I mean, they, they might know about Skype, but that's, that's a start, of course. But, but uh, I think there's a lot to do in a structured, um, Structured communication towards towards people you want to address, uh, either your customers or your um, the, the journalists uh, out there. To the culture, I mean, the culture how we build things, the kind of attitude that that's something that we that we we need to carry on, not just like when we gather around here and share these ideas, but like being, being the company that you are, stating that you are an Estonian company, at least founded in Estonia, or partially the culture that has been from Estonia, sort of when you buy stuff that has made in Japan, you know what it stands for. So there should be some made in Estonian brand that we can carry with our companies, even though we have you know, people from around the world. What, what, what sort of barriers have you faced in trying to get your message out about the interesting things that you're doing? Uh, our barriers right now is people really don't, uh, well, first of all, people really don't know about what's going on with the oceans because there's no information. Uh, things that are happening in terrestrial applications are, are, uh, are at the forefront. And, uh, and so the, the volume of information uh, that we have around the oceans uh, is so little compared to terrestrial. That's, that's uh, like a you know, voice in the desert. Uh, so, but that also, also has been a positive angle because it brings something really new uh, on the table and, uh, and uh, it's kind of sad, but we have been able to use uh, uh, pretty sad uh, events, natural events like the Hurricane Sandy to attract attention to what we're doing. Uh, for example, you know, all the uh, predictions about where this Hurricane Sandy is going to go were wrong, and partially because there weren't wasn't enough uh, information, quality information about the uh, ocean heat content. So after after the hurricane had happened, we gathered all the information. We gave it to a community member who made a prediction or a, it's a hindcast uh, based on this data, which matched exactly to the reality. And so that this is the kind of uh, way we, we try to do that. With, and then we apply math, and we say this is an Estonian company and so forth. You, your your company Fortumo. Uh, tends to be uh, an engine that, that uh, a lot of other companies are, are built on, so you're somewhat hidden from 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 public view uh, in a certain sense. So how do you how do you get your message out? What sort of barriers are you facing? Yeah, on, on our case, um, I mean, there, there's no need for us to be out there for uh, for uh, the general public. So for us, it's, it's important to be out there for the, for the entire community in a way that yeah, we facilitate payments. So in the end of the day, I mean, we want to make uh, our clients, I mean, app developers, in developers, uh, social networks, life easier so that they could, they could uh, earn more money, money. So on the other kind of a general user's perspective, it actually doesn't matter um, what you use as long as it's secure, it works properly and, and it's good. So, so yeah, our, we are pretty kind of faced towards the, the, the business. 
and, and working working with the community. But, uh, I think I don't have any good pointers how to um, how to kind of deliver the Estonian mentality uh, to the world. I think Estonia is, is um, kind of in a good position um, in a way that there's so little of us, and um, it's it's actually a very kind of back community. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say Estonia is like Silicon Valley. Um, it's kind of becoming more and more like that. But, but what's, what's good about Estonia is that, uh, that the community is really small, so a lot of people know each other. So uh, luckily, so although another Estonian would like to eat another Estonian, luckily these days we share more information. So but we should do that more. So to, to share the success stories, share the things that have happened, share the disasters what we have made, when we have tried to go to a new market. So yeah, this is something in any kind of bigger scale, if you are, I don't know, in Russia or in Germany, in England, in the UK, then the community is much bigger, so it's, it's easy to get lost. So I think that's a good advantage being in Estonia.